Right, guys. Uh, in today's question, uh, what we're actually going to do is a surface development of this uh, structure here. Okay, so we can see we are given the elevation and the plan view of it. Now, on the structure, if we look at it straight away, we can see that it's actually made up of uh, a square base because it's obviously sitting on the ground and it's a square base. It's obviously got another square top. We can see it here, and all the sides then are actually inclined to the horizontal plane. So what that means is all the sides are basically at a slight angle and they're all made up of actual triangles. So there's no actual circular or cylindrical pieces in this. Uh, it's all made up of um, roughly straight pieces that are either sitting on the ground or at an angle to the, to the ground. And what we have to do, it says, for question three, it says, the graphic on the left shows a sign mounted on a concrete base. The molds used to create the base is constructed from a single sheet metal. So this structure up here, is all single sheet metal that has basically been folded together to make up the structure. And it says the plan and elevation of the mold are given above. As I explained already, we got the elevation here, the plan here. And then it says complete a one piece surface development of the sheet metal uh, piece and use the given point one as your starting point. Okay, so when we are doing a surface development, it is very important that we always have true lengths, okay? So let's break down the structure. As I said, the base is square. One, two, three, four. And the reason we know uh, that is sitting on the ground is because if you look at one, two, three, and four, on they are all sitting on our x, y line, so it is exactly perfectly sitting on the ground. That means the distance from one to two is the same as two to three, three to four, and four back to one. They are all true lengths. Okay? One to two, two to three, three to four, four to one are all true lengths. So what I would do is I would just make a note of that true length. And I will actually just put in base, base true length, uh, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then we've obviously got 4 to 1. Just give us a little idea, okay? And then we also have another top true length because the reason the top ones, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, and 8 back to 5 are all true lengths is because they are all parallel with the horizontal plane. If you look up here, the top of it is parallel with the ground. So they are all true lengths as well. So top, true lengths. You don't have to write this in. It's just a little guide, so we're working it out. 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, all true lengths. And then the last bit then, so we've got the top sorted. We've got the base sorted. And if you break it up after that, we've actually only got about 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll just show you here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, count it again, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've only got eight more lines. And what we have to recognize after that, those eight more lines actually make up the rest of the structure. Those eight more lines, are they all the same length if we look at it in plan? Yes, they are all the same length. And it's just the case then, are any of them a true length yet? And the answer is no. And the reason none of them are a true length is because the line 1 to 7, 1 to 6, whatever, 4 to 6, 4 to 5, and so on, none of them are parallel to the XY line. And it is the exact same in elevation. So if they're not parallel to the XY line in either view, then none of them can be a true length. So what we're going to do is relate back to something very similar that we've done in another day's question whereby we learned how to get true lengths and we use the principle of cones to find them. So I'm just going to work here with the number 1 and 7. So this generate or this line here. And if I imagine that was just a line and it was a generator on a cone and 7 was my apex, okay, and 1 was a point on the ground. And what I had to do is, and I use it as a radius because when we look down the top of a cone we always see a circle. And if 7 is the apex, the apex is above the center of it at the base. And all we would do is we would do a circle to draw our plan view of it. Obviously, I'm not going to use that, and I've explained this in another question. And what we're going to do is we are literally just going to rotate from 7 to 1 down. 7 to 1 being our radius. So, and this is all about just obtaining true lengths. So I'm going to take the distance from 7 to 1. Rotate it down. And that now is my point 1 in a new position right there. Okay? T. 
think of that as the extreme generator. Remember, seven was my apex, one was on the ground. Look, seven, there's my apex, one is on the ground. And all I've done now is, that is my extreme generator of a cone, when we're looking straight at it. That one is on the ground, it's now, for, it's moved from this position here, out to this position, so from here over to here. Look, it's just traveled, so it's moved from here over to here. So that's the new position of my one. And now, what I can join is that to 7. And what I have found there is the true length of 7 to 1. Very, very important. That is the true length of it. Why is it the true length? Because look, 7 to 1, it is now parallel with the XY line. Therefore, that is a true length. Okay, and we know 7 to 1 is the same as 7 to 2, is the same as 8 to 2, 8 to 3, 5 to 3, 5 to 4, 6 to 4, and 6 back to 1, and so on. All of them are now found, because I have found one of them, that means all of them are the exact same. So now, if that's the case, we have the true lengths for our base, we have the true lengths for our top, because that's two true lengths so far, and now we've got the true lengths for all the sides, these bits here. So I've actually got this true length, this true length, and this true length. Now it's just a case of simply completing the problem. So I'm actually going to start with the face 1, 2, 7. You see this triangle here? And they've given us our start point here. So I'm going to take the distance from 1, starting off here, and I'm going to do it down. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take the distance on my compass from 1 to 2. That distance right there. And I'm going to step it down. Very important here. Use my label. There's two. Okay. So I can heavy in that straight away. Because that's a definitive veg. Okay. There's my one to two. Now, have I got the true length from one to seven? Yes, I do. It's here. So I just get that on my compass. So somewhere along there, sorry, I should have done it from 1. So somewhere along there is 7. And then, obviously, this distance from 2 to 7 is the exact same as that as well. So 2 to 7 is the exact same. And where they crossed each other is my 7. And I can join that. I should want to do this lightly. And that there is the true shape of my 172. 172. Now, what we have to do is, ah, what's 7 joined to? 7 is joined to 2, but it's also joined to 8. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take from 7, I'm going to go to 8, like that. And from 7, I'm going to swing an arc. Now, somewhere along there is 8. Do we know exactly where? No, we don't. But... Do we know the distance from 2 to 8 as a true length? Yes, we do, because it's the same as 2 to 7. So what I can do is come back to my 2. Where was the 7? Take that distance. Or I could have got it from up here. It's the exact same thing. They're both the same. And mark it off. Now, have I found 8? Yes, I have. There's my 8. So now I can join 7 to 8. And 8 back to 2. Just heavy that in. A little bit more. These are all construction lines at the moment. And I'll explain why. No, I'll actually just heavy in a little part of it now. No, at this point I know I can heavy in this because that was my start. I can also heavy in this. But the lines in the middle, it's very important to recognise this. The lines in the middle. Now these are technically folds lines because that is where the sheet metal would have folded over on top of itself. And where you have fold lines, we put in as hatch lines. There we go. That's kind of how it would start to look like. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to build it up. So I'm just going to rotate out here a little bit 
so you can see it a bit better. Now, I'll do one more section, then I'm going to speed it up. So, we can see so far we've done 1, 2, 7. We've done this section here. So we have. We've done that section. Okay. And now what we have to do is we also have to do... Now, uh, sorry, we're on to 2, 8, 3. So, have I got the distance from 2 to 3 as a true length? Yes, I do. I'm just going to take it straight off the sheet. Because it's sitting on the ground, so that has to be a true length. So from 2, somewhere out here is... 3 and then I've got 2 to 8 already now I have to get 8 to 3 and that's the same as my true length that was originally up here at the top and I'm going to step that out from 8 there it is very simple and what we do is we continue we just keep continuing to build it up in that frame. So there's 3. I'll do one more. Now I've got 8 to 5 to back to 3. So it's the exact same thing. 8 to 5, take the distance from here. So it's from 8. Somewhere along there is that. Then I'm going to take my true length originally. Remember the 2 to 8 true length? Sorry. Which is my true length that I had to find using the cone principle. And I'm going to take that from 3 to 5. So there's my 5. So what we are going to do now, I'm going to speed up the video, but we're going to keep continuing until that same sequence until we get back to obviously 1 to 7, if that makes sense. Okay? Okay, now, as we can see, I have uh, the surface uh, developed out there using the principle of the, the tree true lens that we obtained. And it's literally just the case now at this point, right? It's essentially the question has all been done because this whole thing would actually fold back together. You can see I started with 1 and 7, so I obviously have to finish with 1 and 7 as well. Wherever you start, you have to finish. Um, now, you might wonder, you might be asking why at this point, why have I not heavied in that line? And now the truth is, just based on the DCG Solutions book, at this point here, they actually have it in that. However, at this point here, we also have, remember, at this point, we also have a top on top of it as well that has a square. So technically, I should have a square that is falling out here like that, perpendicular there. So I'm actually going to just put that in, okay? So to be able to do that, it's quite simple. We could just literally do sliding set squares. I'm just going to put that in. So at this point here, if I had 5, 6, I literally just went out perpendicular to that. And that distance then, I would take 5 and 6, I would get them on my compass, because it's the same distance out, and then literally, There we go. Now technically, if I was accurate, that should match up. And it does. They fold in together. And 6 and 7 would also fold in there like that. So obviously then with our labeling purposes, that would be 7 and that would be 8, if that makes sense. Now, that would be the top of there and now I can actually heavy that in. 
ok and there we go that will be the surface development done now that is something I think that's actually left out in the DCG solutions uh, textbook there's the top of it now at this point I have the question completed however you might also say well if it has a top it has a bottom as well and it's th that is true it is the exact same principle how I completed the top there I would also complete the bottom it is essentially another square and I could do it off any one of these I could do it off this side this side this side this side I could do it off any one of them it's literally a case of just coming out perpendicular to one of them lines and taking my true length and marking it off but however, what I am lacking on the page and the, on the actual sheet is space to complete it. So I'm just going to leave it here for now, but that's why I wanted to put in this top surface here. Okay, so I hope that helps you there today, guys. Uh, literally, the most important thing they are recognizing is the true lengths in plan of the two uh, of the top surface here and the bottom surface, and then recognizing how to get the true length of one of these sides. Okay, we took one and seven as the example. Literally, I took seven as the apex of a cone. Okay, and literally from one, which is on the ground, rotated it around, brought it up to my XY and joined it up to seven to get the true length. So that is exactly enough for that true length that we got. It was the same true length as one and seven is the same as seven and two, eight to two, eight and three, and so on. Okay, so that's the question complete there, guys. I hope you found it helpful.